On December 7, 1941, 3,500 Americans were killed or wounded. The Japanese attack on Pearl Harbor cost the U.S. to join the war and gave them the determination to see it through. Because of this, many Americans became afraid of Japanese or Americans of Japanese descent. Therefore, President Franklin Roosevelt signed the Executive Order 9066 on February 19, 1942. This authorized the internment of thousands of Japanese or American citizens of Japanese ancestry. The prosecution and incarceration of the Japanese people started early spring of 1942. In spring 1942, the Tampa Park Racetrack became a temporary assembly center to 7,800 16 Bay Area Japanese Americans for forced relocation and internment. The people stayed in horse stables, on grasslands, or in the 170 barracks quickly built in the infield while awaiting to be re relocated to Japanese American segregation centers in other parts of the country. On October 13, 1942, Tafram Assembly Center was closed. Japanese Americans and Japanese were moved to prescribed zones. The 10 relocation sites were in remote areas in six western states. They were Arkansas, Wyoming, California, Utah, Arizona, Colorado, and Idaho. My mom drove her own car there to Tan Fran and the U.S. Army confiscated it. There were some buses and the windows were covered with brown paper. The evacuees lived in tar paper covered barracks that were simply constructed without plumbing or cooking facilities of any kind. Most of these barracks were portioned off so that a family of five or six would normally occupy a single room 25 by 20 feet. Bachelors and other unattached evacuees lived mainly in unpartioned barracks which had been established as dormitories. The only furnishings provided by the government in the residence barracks were standard army cots, blankets, small heating stoves, and mattresses filled with straw. One bath, laundry, and a toilet building was available for each block of the barracks and is shared by upwards of 250 people. There was little or no privacy in the barracks. Food was furnished by the government for all evacuee residents. The meals were planned at an average cost of not more than 45 cents per person per day. They were prepared by evacuee cooks and were generally served cafeteria style in mess halls that accommodated between 250 and 300 people. At all centers, government-owned or government-leased farmlands were being operated by evacuee agricultural crews to produce a considerable share of the vegetables needed in the mess halls. At nearly all centers, the farm program also included the production of poultry, eggs, and pork. And at a few, the evacuees were raising beef and dairy products. Every evacuee was subject to the same food rationing restrictions as all other residents of the United States. Medical care was available to all evacuated residents of relocation centers without charge. Hospitals had been built at all the centers and were manned in large part by doctors, nurses, nurses' aides, and technicians from the evacuate population. Simple dental and optical services were also provided, and special care was given to infants and nursing mothers. Evacuees requesting special medical services not available at the centers were required to pay for the cost of such services. As all centers, in view of the crowded and abnormal living conditions, special sanitary precautions were necessary to safeguard the community health and prevent the outbreak of epidemics. Education through the high school level was provided by WRA for all school age residents of the relocation center. High schools were being built at most of the centers, but grade school classes would continue to be held in barrack buildings which had been converted for classroom use. Courses of study had been planned and teachers were selected in close collaboration 
with state departments of education in conformity with prevailing state standards. Roughly one half of the teachers in the schools were recruited from the evacuee population. Japanese language schools of the type common on the west coast prior to evacuation were expressively forbidden at all relocation centers. On December 17, 1944, President Roosevelt announced the end of the exclusion of Japanese Americans from the West Coast, thus allowing the return home of the internees. Relocation after incarceration was difficult, especially since prejudice still ran high in the West Coast. Many ISI, first generation Japanese Americans, never regained their losses, living out their lives in poverty and poor health.